I've got 12 of these electric Poundland bulbs in my kitchen and there's three banks of four and when I installed them I put the dates on 28th the 9th 18 is when they were all changed. I put some old, um, I replaced some old Philips ones which were not very nice light whereas these give out a reasonably nice sort of daylight white sort of medium warm white I suppose you'd call it but it's quite pleasant in there and they're quite bright and it's 240 volt 5 watts 50 hertz and out of the 12 there's three banks of four as I say out of tw out of the 12 five of them failed this is the fifth one and this was installed on 28th and 9th 18 so it's about lights on for about three hours a day in the kitchen I suppose and October November December January four months and 20 days so that's 120 probably 130 days times four so this one's lasted about five six hundred hours okay so it's less than a thousand hours for a pound but the others some of the others failed literally within a month of putting them up so it's a bit potluck actually they're all in the same conditions and the same voltage from the same supply in the same ambient temperature and on for the same time so some of them haven't lasted well at all others you know 400 hours for a pound maybe you think that's worth it I don't know but the Philips ones that were in there before had been in there for years and years thousands and thousands of hours and maybe they were three or four pounds each is it cost effective really to buy one pound bulbs you tell me it's just the inconvenience of changing them and also the plastic and the housing and all the chemicals and chemistry that's gone into making these the precious earths in the LEDs is can be thrown away so as well as just, you know, is it worth you as an individual having a one pound bulb that lasts three or four hundred hours maximum, it's also the cost of the planet. You know, a three pound bulb that lasts three thousand hours or four thousand hours, it's only one bulb to be made, um, taken from the earth, um, manufactured and then thrown away. Whereas in the same period, there'd be five or six of these in the, in the, uh, in the landfill. OK, but this one, if I just um, wheel over a power supply, I've got one of these bulb analyzers, Hoppy and uh, plug her in. No action at all, she's not doing anything at all, so let's, uh, let's whip it open and have a look inside. There we go. So... So... Nice little dome in there. And there we have the bulb itself. Okay. So we've got 10 LEDs and immediately I can see this one here, look, it's got a black dot, the black dot of death in the middle of the LED um, phosphor. It's 94V0, which is a fire rating of the PCB so that it's self-extinguishing doesn't catch fire. So if the thing does burn up and it, as soon as the ignition source is removed, it won't burn. It's mounted on a metal heat sink anyway, it's one of those very thin boards mounted on an aluminium plate. And let's just take it apart then and see. two screws one hello that one's loose look <laughs> it's already loose I wonder if that's why it's blown up because it's on this side of the board and underneath there I'm assuming there's some kind of heat sink so it looks like it hasn't been connected to the heat sink properly because the Chinese worker forgot to do up the screw yeah the old consumer pays once again in the environment yeah, there's a metal cup underneath there which is then fitted into here, so it's a heat sink underneath there. Can you see that metal arrangement? So what I'm going to do is desolder these wires and take this apart, and um, let's see what we can find out. Put the iron on. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, there's just one... Yeah, if we take the um, this off, you'll see underneath, I can see this now, is that the... Um, Heat sink compound they put on hasn't quite made contact underneath that LED because the screw was loose, I think. So that's interesting. Maybe that one LED just got too hot. We can uh, test that conjecture actually by replacing the LED and putting it back together and seeing if it works. But for a pound, there's a lot in this thing, but it's such a shame that it has to be thrown away. I'm guessing there's just a capacitor in here or some kind of dropper. It's going to be a capacitive dropper, presumably. And then you see the uh, flux from the solder in there, but nothing too bad. Let's just take that off there. 
remembering that the uh, the white wire goes to this point. Yeah, so because of the it's an aluminium uh, aluminium substrate on this board, there's a lot of um, resistance to soldering there. You can see it's sucking the heat out of my soldering tip. Yeah, yeah, if you look at the one that's blown, you can see this is the heat sink kind of contact. That screw was loose, and the one that's blown, um, presumably it's been running a little bit hotter because there's no heat sink contact with the um, heat sink compound and the heat sink. There's no contact underneath that LED or near to that LED. It's one place where it's missing. So it could be it was just running a bit too hot. So let's just see if this comes out of there or not. Now here's the heat sink coming out. Hopefully, he says. Ah, look. Yeah. So, got an aluminium heat sink. It's just a pressed cap um, in there to try and distribute, take some of the heat away from the, uh, the LEDs. And there we've got a simple dropper. It's. Uh, Yeah, so it's a nice cap actually. This is a 0 0.82 microfarad 275. Can you see that down in there? Yeah, 0 0.82 microfarad, 820 nanofarad, 275 volts AC. So actually, that cap, if you bought that from um, RS or Farnell or you wanted one of those to go inside a piece of equipment, it would be probably 30 or 40 pence. They're quite expensive, these 275 volts AC caps, so they've used the right cap. Um, yeah, so I shall be taking that cap out of there and keeping it for a rainy day when I need one. Yeah, look at this. Uh, same capacitor, same voltage, same value. is 68p for one. 100 would be 37p plus that, based on, there's only down prices for thousands down here. A thousand, talking about for a thousand off, would be something like 35p plus that, which would be 42p just for the capacitor. The, these are a bit bigger than the one in there, so the Chinese one has got a smaller volume, which makes you wonder whether the actual markings are accurate or not, but it's an interesting point. Back to the video. So to get that off there, I'm gonna to have to remove that button at the end. This button here. Which is presumably trapping a, a wire, that's the connection. There you can see, is that the wire there? Yeah, there's the end of the wire, just there. Or is there the wire? Oh, there it is, there. There's the wire. You see that little thing there? So then if I just pull on this, presumably that will come out, hopefully. And then we can reveal what we have. There, so there we go, a bit more. Awesome. Oh, I see. It's It's also trapped here. So if this is a negative connection, or the uh, AC would be neutral, presumably if the bulb holder was wired up correctly, but not always. And that's just hooked over the edge. So let's pull her out. All right. So we've got a bridge rectifier in there. We've got a discharge or series resistor, or a discharge resistor two twenty zero, which I would twenty ohm resistor in series with it. Then a 100k resistor across this reservoir capacitor. We've got a 105 degree, 400 volt, 3.3 uh, microfarad smoothing capacitor. So there's no real flicker with this bulb, so it's quite good. And then in there is just going to be a, a resistor which is also acting as a fuse, probably a 10 ohm resistor or something like that. And then again, there's our cap. Not bad at all, really. I mean, the power factor is going to be awful when we get it going, but uh, that's what's inside this bulb. So, with further ado, I think what we need to do is to find another one of the old ones, which I may have thrown away, I'm not sure, and just change that LED for a new one and then put it back together and see how it goes.